This is our second online lesson on forces. There are many different types of forces. Uh, some of them are natural forces, some of them are contact-based forces. For example, gravity, the electric, the magnetic, and the nuclear forces are natural. They're natural because you do not need physical contact between two objects for that force to exist. Then you have contact forces like normal, friction, tension, spring, and buoyancy. Those forces are called contact forces because two objects need to physically be touching each other for that force to exist. There are other forces that are not listed here, but these will be the big nine that we're going to look at throughout the year. For this particular unit, we're only going to look at the first five, gravity, normal, friction, tension, and spring. In fluids, we'll look at buoyancy. Then later on down the year, we'll look at the electric and magnetic forces. And at the last uh, unit of the year, we'll look at the nuclear force. So, all other forces that we're going to use in this class are going to be caused by direct interaction. For example, a dog pulls a sled. That doesn't classify as any one of these forces here. Um, but we are going to be able to say force pull, or if you push a cart, force push. Otherwise, unless the problem directly states it, or a diagram shows it, you do not use any other forces than these given nine. We'll start with gravity. The force of gravity, F subscript G, is mg, where m is the mass in kilograms, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. Each object will have various magnitudes of force, but the acceleration will stay the same. Now this 9.81 works only for Earth. On the Moon it's about 1.6, on Mars it's about 3.6, on Jupiter it's about 27. So it does change from planet to planet, but on Earth the force of gravity is known as uh, m, your mass, times 9.81. Second thing I do want to note about this is gravity is often called weights. And actually, let me rephrase that. The force of gravity is often called weight. Next force we'll talk about is normal force. This is the result of two solid objects in physical contact with one another. So for example, you're standing on the ground. The ground is pushing you up. That's called the normal force. When you push on the wall, the wall pushes back on you. That's called the normal force. Uh, for example, um, other examples of normal force. As you're standing on a ramp and you feel sort of angled downwards a bit. The normal force is what's pushing you up and you are staying up because of the normal force but a little bit of friction as well. And our next force, speaking of, is friction. Friction is the result of two solid objects, just like normal, but they're either sliding across one another or they're attempting to slide across one another. Uh, there are two types. There's kinetic for objects that are in motion and there's static for objects that are stationary. So a good example of this is let's say there's a really big sled and we're trying to push it. If we're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, but the sled does not move, it's static friction that's preventing it from moving. Once it begins to move, there is still friction, so there's still a lot of resistance for that sled, and that's why we have to keep pushing or it will stop. That type of friction is kinetic. Next force is tension. Tension deals with ropes. And the key about tension is tension in a rope is uniform everywhere, except where the, there's a kink, also known as a pinch, in the rope. So if you're playing tug of war, everyone feels the same tension in the rope. Uh, that is a little interesting, because if we do want to talk about an example of tug of war, and you have a smaller person against, say, Endomican Sioux, which, for those of you who don't know, is a lion's defensive end. Uh, very, very big guy. And regardless of the difference in the physical strength and the physical size between, say, a tiny freshman who weighs 100 pounds and a defensive end who weighs almost 300 pounds, both of them are going to feel the same tension in the rope as long as they're holding on to the rope. 
since the defensive end is going to win this battle, or most likely going to win this battle, uh, what will happen is the smaller person, if they're not able to exert that kind of force on the rope, the rope will either slip through their hands, which sounds very painful, or more likely, once they notice, it begins to slip, they'll let go. Spring force is a force that is constructed out of properties of a spring, usually metal, but not always, and has a tendency to restore itself to its natural state. The spring force equals kx. K is the spring constant. It is different for every spring, but while you're using a particular spring, it remains constant for the entire duration of that problem, that lab, that investigation, whatever it is. And X is the displacement of the spring. It means how far have you stretched the spring, or, since some springs can be compressed, how far have you compressed it? Now this is how far with respect to its natural state. So we have five different forces. The question is, when do you use which one? Gravity is almost always going to be used. Anytime you're on a planet, there's gravity. Even in outer space, if you're orbiting a planet, there's still gravity. Normal force is used when two solid objects are in physical contact with one another. It doesn't matter if they're moving. It doesn't matter if they're stationary. It doesn't matter if someone's pushing on it, trying to get them to move. Normal force exists as long as two solid objects are in physical contact. Friction exists when those two solid objects that are in physical contact are sliding or trying to slide along one another. Friction cannot exist without the normal force. Tension is used anytime ropes are involved, and spring is used anytime springs are involved. Thank you for watching.